Yeah, America F1. America F1. It's a golden run. America F1. Welcome to another episode of America F1. Today we are totally focused on our buddy Scott, who is driving once again. And today we're going to talk about his experience at the greatest, one of the greatest racetracks in all of the world, Spa Frankumshaw. Frank, 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 Frankfurter. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Frankenberger. <laughs> Frank, Frank, Frank something. Paul, oh, what is it? Paul. Oh, Frank, Frank is Sean. Frank is Sean. Man, I'm just. Uh, well, home of the Belgian people. Yeah. <laughs> That's America. We want. Okay, Scott, take it away, buddy. Sure. Um, Porsche runs this great program called Porsche Track Experience in Europe. But they don't run it. It's run by Manfi Racing, one of the greatest race teams in Europe, owned by, by Porsche 51%. Manfi puts on programs uh, involving both street cars and race cars at a number of the major F1 tracks in Europe, including the Circuit de Catalonia, um, the Red Bull Ring, uh, Spa, uh, the Newburgh Ring as well. Uh, Le Castellet in France, and what they do is they run a number of different programs. Most of them focus on road cars and not race cars, where you get to drive, depending on your ability level and experience level, uh, you know, you get to drive anything from a regular 911 Carrera to a full bore 992 GT3 RS with, you know, 525 horsepower and 1,800 pounds of downforce, which is more than a GT3 cup car race car, by the way. Um, that's probably what 80% of the participants do. And they have various levels, programs for people who have no experience, um, up through programs for people who are very experienced. Um, um, and um, Was they it also, raining? Was it raining? Well, it did. <laughs> they also, though, have uh, programs that focus just on race cars. Um, as I said, Manti Racing is a you know, very famous uh, GT3 race team as well as they make a lot of the best performance modifications for Porsche that you can buy for your Porsche to make the lap time lower. And um, they run programs that basically, t they rent you and they will instruct you if you want uh, a, a series of Porsche race cars anywhere from the 718 GT4 RS Club Sport, uh, which is sort of the base model. Uh, Patrick Dempsey is driving that <laughs> now in the United States, for example. Uh, that is Porsche's lead GT4 car with about 500 horsepower. That's what I drove. All the way up through a 911 RSR. The mm -hmm. Le Mans car that with the mid-engine, not even in the back, that had that incredible, really loud V6 that was so expensive to produce and maintain. It was part of the LM GTE class mm -hmm. uh, the World Endurance Championship that they eliminated the class. They also now have, though, their main... A uh, car that they take to compete at Le Mans and at WEC and at IMSA called the 911 GT3R. And if you are experienced enough, they will rent you that for the day for 24,000 euros. But most of us, uh, by the way, the 911 RSR is 48,000 euros for the day. Wait. Most no? of, but most of us are uh, one of two cars. Probably dollars. Yeah. Um, $48,000 for a weekend to drive a car? Uh, no, well, one day. <laughs> one day of a 911 RSR. Yeah, but uh, it's, a race, it's, a, it's a race car. I mean, it comes Wait, with a team. It comes with a team. Yes. Wait, I don't get the whole weekend? What's that? <laughs> I don't get the whole weekend? I don't get Friday. He's Saturday. trying to bargain. He's, he's trying to I'm, bargain. By the way, that car was not out most of the most of the two days. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. For forty eight thousand dollars, I only get to drive it one day. <laughs> Do you have any idea how expensive that car is to run? No. <laughs> explain to him. Explain to him. You need a, You get like a team. You get a team. You have to rebuild that car all the time. It's very fragile. The parts are extraordinarily expensive. You're talking mega money to run that car. Um, 
But and they're mm-hmm. showing you the data points uh, to make you go faster and faster. And it's like you get coaching and it's everything. It's like having a team around you. But I want to be clear you about something. Yes, but I okay. That car was in the was in the garage most of the time. Most of the people there who were in the race car programs rented either a 911 GT3 Cup car or the 718 uh, GT4 RS Club Sport. Uh, the GT3 Cup car, by the way, is not the car that Porsche uses to compete against the other brands at IMSA and at the World Endurance Championship. That's the 911 GT3 R, which is 24,000 euros a day to rent. The Cup car is what Porsche uses for its 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 inter Porsche racing at, for example, the Carrera Cup, the Sprint Challenge. Um, that, again, most participants rent it either the Cup car or the 718 GT3 RS uh, Club Sport, which is the GT4 RS Club Sport, which is the Cayman race car. In any event, what I did was something called the Porsche Master Race Car Program, uh, and there were five students in that program. They run it four times a year. Patrick Dempsey was in that course in Spain at the Cirque de Catalonia a few months ago to tune back up. Because, you know, he used to race at the Le Mans. He did GT3 racing for a while, but then stopped. So didn't, he, didn't he bin it during practice at Le Mans? Uh, I don't know. He probably did. People yeah, pretty, pretty spectacularly. If it is, I think it's Patrick Dempsey. Is there another star racing? No. Oh, yeah. It is the, it's the guy that played in one of the um, Marvel uh Marvel movies, um, he binned it um, pretty yeah. heavily, actually. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> and by the way, he was saying he was saying euros, not dollars. So you can add eleven percent to the dollar price. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm just he trying to get over like, it. I'm, I'm trying to soak it in. And when yeah. when I hear what you're saying, you got to go for two days, though. You get to race in your car for two days. Yes, I did what's called the Porsche Master Race Car Program, and it's for okay. people who had um, enough track training, either with them or with me. I got it through AMG, the AMG Driving Academy, where I did right. like five track days with them for for at Circuit of the Americas, and really good drivers. People have competed at Le Mans and been on the podium, been on the podium at the Rolex Twenty Four A. AMG is great. You know, the first thing people want to know: how many people crash? Oh, okay. Eight. Well. We had the race cars for the two days we were on had 10 45-minute stints. In those 10 stints, there were eight crashes. In 10 stints, eight crashes. Yeah. Uh, there were, were they races. were they fined? Uh, like, do, you, do you have to pay a penalty if you yes. crashed it? Okay. If you crashed? Do you have to pay the money? How does that work? Okay. If you the crashed it, you own it. <laughs> at least the Porsche Master Race Car Program and the Porsche GT, uh, the GT Track Day Race Car Program, which is yeah. basically a one, which is basically they think you have enough experience with them or with someone else, or you have some experience and you have to get an instructor. They just rent you the race car for the day, and you go out when the race cars go out. Uh, I was in a more structured course, but but basically, if you're in either of those courses, you're essentially renting the race car from Manthai Racing. <laughs> And they, that includes track insurance up to a deductible. And the deductible varies on the car you get. It's anywhere from about 7,000 euros to, let's say, 25 to 20 to 25,000 euros. But that's nothing. So you know, yeah. I crash. I got to come out of the pocket with at least seven grand. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't pay extra for that. It's included in the price. If you were to go to, let's say, the Newburg ring, as I did this summer. And rent a regular GT4 RS, not the race car version, not the club sport, the regular one that you can buy from a Porsche dealer, put it on the street, that's street legal. If you get the truck insurance for even like six tourist laps on the Newburgh rate, that's yeah. 2000 bucks for six laps. And it will have a deductible. And it will still have a deductible, but if you don't get the track insurance, you're paying for the car. And, and, and if I go, sure, before you get excited, because I know this from watching all the videos, and I know for some friends who've raced, uh, brought their cars to Nürburgring, if you crash at the Nürburgring and they send out the tow truck and you dented one of their barriers, yeah, sh- Scott, go ahead. Well, if you're at the Nürburgring, <laughs> I was not, you have to pay for that barrier, and each section is like a thousand euros or something. It's a lot of money. Yep. Um, I don't know what the deal was at Spa, but what I can tell you is, 
NASCAR, NASCAR race car program gives you is for five students, you get two track days, you get your own instructor. Mine was Stefan Schmucker, who was a former Porsche racer, who was incredible. Uh, he now sells Porsches in Stuttgart in addition to instructing. You get your own instructor, your own mechanic, and your own race car, none of which you have to share for those two days. You get your own, you get as many slick and rain tires as you use. And I went through four sets. Well, right now, guess what? That's about $8,000 to $10,000 if you were to pay for that. You get track insurance. That's another probably three to $4,000. By the time you get through just the cost of the tires and the track insurance, you're at about $15,000 of value. Because Porsche is subsidizing this as a marketing exercise. Okay. Amazing. Okay. And you said, sorry, you said that was 24 grand for two days. About 23, 24 grand. So oh, if I you know, cheaper. And I've saved up, I mean, obviously, this, this is, uh, if I rented a $48,000 car and I total it, what's my deductible? Um, it's more than, it's, maybe it's, it's I, I, probably around the order of 50 to 100. I'm guessing it's probably 50,000. I mean, they have track insurance for it. But as you go up in car, like, for example, at Red Bull Ring, I'm renting something. I, I'm going to Red Bull Ring next week for four more track days. And one of them is a GT track day race car day where I'm renting a race car again. I'm, take, I'm going to be out with my instructor from anti-racing, Stephen uh, Schmucker, in another car and the mechanic, Philip. And I'm renting, actually, the most powerful race car that Porsche ever built other than their hypercars, the 911 GT2 RS club sport that has 700 horsepower. If I bin that, it's 20,000 20, euros. And those cars <laughs> come with 250 kilometers included, but the people at Manthai Racing nicknamed me the endurance driver because I didn't stop at 250 kilometers. I did, you know, all track sessions every minute. So at Spa, for example, I drove more than 350 kilometers per day, more than 700 kilometers altogether. And I expect they expect I will do the same thing at Red Bull Ring. So your rental includes 250 KMs in that in that course, uh, or in the in, in the track day race car course. Above 250 every 50 kilometers is another like 999 euros. But the but wait a minute, but the race car course, it's all included. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. So you have to be fairly fit, Scott, because I've done track days. And I know I would be exhausted after three or four laps, the concentration. And I was driving an M5, which was a heavy car. I was driving Golf GT, uh, Golf R's. And they're heavy, they're heavy cars, you know. Um, and so you must be fairly fit to be able to continuously do those kind of laps in a day. I'm not a big gym person, but I live in New York City and I walk about 10,000 steps a day. So whatever that is, five, six, seven miles a day. So in that sense, I guess I'm fit enough. But yeah, let me be clear. That's not that's not car fit, if you know what I mean. Like your neck and all those corners and the G forces of pressing the brakes and, and, all that. The and I know the, the neck, cars are very soft. Good. Yeah. Look, the suspension in a race car is as hard as a rock. And there's no give. This 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 ain't no street car. But the G forces are not similar to F1 in terms of no no, mm. the cornering oh, yeah. forces are not, but the braking G forces are extremely significant. When you're on slick tires, let's say at Spa, you're on the Kemmel Strait, you're doing 150, 160 miles per hour. You have to break down to about 40 miles per hour within about 100 yards. Or yeah. 100 and, they're, and they're race brakes. So oh, therefore, yeah. you're applying an awful lot more pressure than you would in a family car. In order to get <laughs> braking pressure, you have to apply about 200 pounds of force. So you can't, you can't well, brake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Angle. You have to take the whole side of your body, the whole left side of your body, and slam on the brakes with everything you can to get right. to proper. And if, if you don't do it, your instructor is going to nicely yell yeah. at you. <laughs> yeah. do you. Do you use a heel and toe? No. no. Uh oh, no. it's not. These are automatic cars. Heel and towing mm -hmm. is for geared cars. It's when you have three pedals. Yeah, for gears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't. You would uh, never touch the brake and the accelerator at the same time with the same foot. You'd kill yourself. You'd right. make a mistake. Yeah, you'd make a mistake. No, no, no. Well, that that is an old day. That's a you know manual cars uh, for yeah. changing gear in, and then heel and toe is sort of brake and clutch type of thing. Mm -hmm. But did you but throw? Up? Shot. Did you throw up? No. But did you throw up? No. <laughs> I used to ride the roller coasters all the time as a kid. I, I, I. 
I had a season pass to Great Adventure for many, many years. So the first couple laps, are you in the passenger seat and you're watching the instructor's lines? No. No? Um, What I did to get familiar, because I've only seen Spa on, you know, my computer. I play the videos of people driving Spa to get ready. I did what's called the Porsche Track Icons class first, which was the day before. Mass Brake Horse course. Master Mm -hmm. Race Car course. That is a beginner level course for people with no experience. So it was funny. So it was me and some guy who graduated from the top level Mantha Racing course called the Rensport Academy, who can race in any Porsche race he wants. And it was Mm -hmm. us and a bunch of people who'd never been on the track before in the same course. So they put us in four different Porsche street cars, the the, the, you know, the the GT cars, anything with GT4 RS through a, a GT3. Uh, and also the GT3 RS, and we did laps with the instructor. In that group, you're sharing a car, and there are about six cars behind an instructor. But at least through that day, I got to learn the racing line at Spa and get to 100%. see. It. And my, I, I deliberately, and he was very friendly. I was with the guy who has the most race experience, who's graduated from the six day, 80,000 euro uh, course that they run called Rensport Academy who now races Porsches uh, competitively. So he taught me the racing line before before the before I got the race car. You had some great shots. Like this shot right here, like through the trees, is just beautiful. I mean, these are shots that, I mean, the you bus shot probably, today. you got to hang these up somewhere. I mean, you got to, look at that. Look at that storm in the background, and you're going out anyway. You're not I would be scared. so depressed. I would be so depressed if I traveled all that way from the states to there to the spa, and then to go out and be racing. I would look at that weather and I go, "Oh God, I'm not going to get the oh, grip I want." Since, uh, you got to show the picture of my car going on a rouge. I you know I, I sent it to you. Oh, we love this shot here. Yeah. yeah, I love but, that. But that mm. is uh, of the ten stints. Um, Four were in the rain, and three were in heavy rain. And so I got to tell you, you are shocked at the grip that rain tires have. You are not Mm. your rain tires in your car. These tires are so soft in comparison. And I would say they have 85 to 90% of the grip that slicks, unless you're in pools of standing water. They are remarkably capable. Um, remark shockingly capable. So I actually love driving in the rain. I so, was you're you're going just as fast on the straight. You're just braking a little earlier, and you have to do what's called a rain yeah. line, which is slightly. Yeah, different. And you're using and you're using ten times more the skill. You, you know, you you got to believe in your grip, and you got to get ready for a corner. And you, you uh, your ass is your guide. And if you feel like you if you feel that you're coming, you know, if, if your ass is sliding a little bit, you got to be ready to counter it. Yep. It is it is far more skill set to run in the rain. But I think you know to, when you're novicing and it's your first time and whatever, and you've got a lot of responsibility with a car like that, I would much prefer to run in the dry first. Yeah, that's so what I would like to do problem. is ask. Like for the fans out there listening, and I want to put them kind of in the seat with you and tell me what you're feeling. And like, is it hot in your race suit? Oh How does God. the race suit fit? And uh-huh. you, have hel- you have your helmet and then you have the, the device right here. Hands. Hands like after like an hour or hour or two, are you cramping up? Because I just did a track day and my left knee this is before my operation, my left quad was cramping up so bad. And then I had to pee. And I was wondering, like, do I pee in the suit? Do I get out? And what do I do? And so I'm driving, driving. And they got this little microphone. I could talk to the, you know, they, they had the instructor with me. And so I'm like, hey, uh, I got a little bathroom. I said, what do I do? Pee in your suit. And I was like, so is that normal? Because I peed on myself, like, and I and it was running down my leg, and I didn't really like. I felt kind of uncomfortable, but because of the heat, the heat, the pee kind of like evaporated. So it's just I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, 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 hey, Scott. Just before you do, Sherman, <laughs> rewind a moment. <laughs> what were you racing? What were you so, track day? I, I I used to own a, a 911 Porsche for 12 years. Oh, so I did they wow. have uh, the Porsche experience over in Los Angeles. So I, okay. uh, for my birthday, my wife uh, got me that. So I did that. And I, I Recently. drove a 
uh, 911 GT3, uh, wow. and I uh, did the whole course. They have a race course, and then they have like a skate plate, and they have the whole thing. So I did all that. I, and so it wasn't, I wasn't very successful, I guess, because I peed on myself and I threw up. So I don't really know. <laughs> oh, you didn't throw <laughs> up. And honestly, and were you because, driving? What? Because you so before you drive, he has to show you the lines. And so when he's uh, showing me the lines, I had spaghetti like right before, and maybe oh. tell me not to have spaghetti or like oh. anything like that. And so oh we're going, and, and going around the corner, and I said, "Hey, can you stop for a second? And he says, and he just started laughing, and he said some code, you know, over the um, intercom, and I think they all laughed, and he pulled over, and I got out, and I puked. And oh. then I got back in, you know, I drank some water, wiped my mouth. And I said, can I drive now? Because I think if I'm driving, I won't throw up. And so he let me drive from there on. But yeah. What made That's you think what made you, what made you think that it was going to be okay to eat spaghetti before you went out in a fast car with G-forces involved? Uh, my my brain wasn't working that day. Okay, hot. Homer. Okay, okay, Homer. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. When you are in Nomex underwear from head to toe, balaclava on, race suit on, helmet on, you are sweating like a pig from the second that you put it on. When you get in the car, uh -huh. cars don't have air conditioning. The cars no. that get anti racing don't have a cool shirt. Oh, I mean, oh, my racing suit has sports for it, but they don't give them one. You are literally, and it was about 75 degrees, although very humid. I was pouring. Sweat from the second that I put everything on, and you know what? You just have to deal with it. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah wait, yeah. did you pee on yourself though? No, I never had to go. I never had to go. No. In three days, you never had to go. No. What I did? What you have to go? What do you do? You go. You go right before you get in the car. Yeah. And when I got the first thing I did when I got out of each forty-five minutes stint was I drank mega amounts of water because they mm. also give you a drink. My helmet has a drink tube in it. But they don't connect you to a drink at Manti Racing for because for, it's not a race race, um, you know. So the second I got out, I was so thirsty each time after those forty five minutes that I was like guzzling water. So that's how. Oh, so so what we've discovered here is the germ put zero thought into going out in a race car, <laughs> threw up because he ate spaghetti, which I mean, I, I would think if any, any driver, never mind a Formula One driver is watching this podcast, please, please leave a comment because <laughs> he's just dumb. And second of all, he obviously needs to go see a doctor about his bladder control. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Because he wasn't in an endurance race. Jeez, germ. But there is a good piece of advice here, though. <laughs> Even if you don't have a Sherman-like accident, you need a new, if you're doing multi-day activity, you need, at the minimum, a new set of Nomex and a new balaclava every day, or you're going to feel very gross. Which you said you bought. I mean, you, you oh, ended I, up having to buy another set, right? I have, I have many sets of this, because every... Mm. You won't, you would, you literally come home and these things, your Nomex is completely soaked through. Wow. Your race Jeez. suit is completely <clears throat> soaked through because you sweat so much. But that's not so wow. important. To your skin. It's amazing. It's pretty what Nomex. are the differences between when it was wet and when it was dry on your lap times? How much uh, difference in seconds? It's a good question because I never got to find out because it was dry the second day. And Manti Racing, unfortunately, hadn't rented the track exclusively. So the second day, I was sharing the track with about 30 professional and AM racers in 99 GT3 Cup cars who were training and testing for the first 992 Endurance Cup that Porsche has ever held for the 992, you know, the current 911 car, the GT3 Cup car. And it was at Spa that weekend. So we literally couldn't, none of the participants especially me and my comparatively slow 718 GT4 RS, I couldn't get one clean lap in, in the entire second day because you constantly got blue flagged by the professional racers in the faster cars where you have to <laughs> slow, slow down and let them go. So I can't tell you what my lap time would have been. I can so do it. so you, 
So think, you were the moving chicane like Stroll and a bunch of others in Formula One. <laughs> All those other poor race you, drivers you, were trying to fly around that track and you were in the way. <laughs> well, I got out of the way in time, but... Uh, <laughs> Did they give you a discount because of that happened that day? No. Oh, oh, no. Plane, and, I, I mean, some of the people were former Porsche, very senior executives in my course. I won't say who, but as senior as senior gets. <laughs> Some of them were not very happy about that. And neither were I. The, the first Wait, day was. Do you have, have track days? Do you stay at the track or how far is the hotel oh, from where you're at? Um, well, they had two preferred hotels. The one I picked was the Hotel de la Source, which is sort of the premier F1 hotel for Spa because it's literally about you know, 500 yards from the track maximum. Mm. So nice. I think it's not a five star, it's a four star, it's a perfectly nice hotel. But it sure as hell ain't worth the two to three thousand euros a night that they charge people during F1 if you can get a room, which you really can't unless you are an F1, yeah. uh, you know, team. I think I, I think you, I think I saw a, I think I saw a picture of you there. Uh, you sent me a picture when you were in the room, all your gear. Um, so just to know, just to know something, Sherm, and I'm pretty sure I'm right about this, Scott. Um, when Porsche run these things and they charge those kind of prices, the Porsche is losing money. Like this is wow. this is a promo for oh, the yeah. big boys who are going to buy these Porsches and be a part of the mm. Porsche identity and and the Porsche merchandise. Uh, the whole thing is a package and a program. But they're running those at a loss when they rent them out for that you kind of money. Um, the staffing that's there, it's it's enormous. You have a huge staff. You have, I mean, they have more mechanics than I've ever seen. Trailers everywhere. They have a hospitality suite that services lavish food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's that's part of this. Uh, mm -hmm. Like your own instructor, your own mechanic. They sit down with you during the you know the forty five minutes to an hour when you're not on the track, when the road cars are on the track, and you go over the data with your instructor one on one. There's no one else. Um, the, the amount of money they're, I mean, literally, the tires, the track insurance, and what they have to pay the instructor alone. Almost the, wear, the wear and tear on the car. Setting aside the wear and tear of the car and everything else, yes, they, this, this is a loss leader. AMG does the same thing in the United States with street cars, and they will mm. tell you that it's a loss leader meant sort of for brand image. Mm. Um, so, so okay, I want to, I want to just ask you a couple of things. So, okay, you're doing, you obviously are, you're very good now. You ha you have an understanding of how to control these cars. Um, yeah. What is next? Are you going to go to the next level? And I'm not talking the Porsche. I'm talking that. Would you get your ass into a single seater? Would you give it a try? I don't really think I want to do that. I, I a little bit risky for a fifty-something year old. Uh, by the way, my helmet wouldn't work because it's a, a great helmet, but it's not advanced ballistic. Oh, uh, okay. It, for GT racing, I would need a different helmet for that that has the advanced ballistic protection. I wouldn't get in a car without it. And I would only do it that that, that I would only do a car that has a halo. And most of like the racing courses in the States, like Skip Barber or Allen Berg, none of those, those are F4, those are like F4 Formula 4 cars that don't even have halos. I wouldn't get near one of those. You have no right, okay, okay, okay. So I did it. I did it um, six no years ago. I did it six years ago, and it was uh, it's a crappy, it was a crappy little, I think it was a fiberglass tub. Uh, yeah. but you, when, when you sit, when you sit in that tub and then you look to your right and you look to your left and you see this sliver. It's just a sliver of of the frame. And you look at this thing and you go, if I crash this, if I crash this bitch, this thing is going to decapitate me. Yeah. Uh, that's wow. what you, you know, that is what you think. That is what you believe. And uh, this thing didn't even have like decorative edging on it. This was a sliver of fiberglass. It's a, you're just like getting into a tub that you're going to, like a canoe. OK, and then you put wheels on it and an engine and there's like off you go. And I did that in the rain in March in Ireland. Oh, uh, I got to tell you, I will never, ever, ever, ever do it again. Ever. Um, that's yeah. why you got to be like really young and I stupid. Dude, like to get what, 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 stupid. What, you don't, yeah. Well, you don't I, have the fear, you know, you don't have that fear. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's why they start so young, you know. And yeah, you, you don't, don't, you don't have a mortgage. People. Yeah, you don't see older people doing F1, you know, that's getting started in, in yeah. F3 cars, you know, because it's scary. You know? I, I mean, what I would be more likely to do, uh, Paul, to answer your question, 
and I've, I've talked with one race team uh, in Germany about doing it, um, is to do a, some test days in the GT3 race cars, like the AMG GT3 or the 911 sure. GT3 R. Look, sure. when you're driving a GT car, you are driving in a steel cage. So if yeah, you're yeah. Car, oh. even if you're T-boned, there's still a steel cage protecting you. If you're in a Formula yeah. car and you get T-boned, nothing's protecting you. Trust me, trust me, you could, you could give, look, I will go out in, they call it hot hatches, okay? So yeah. they're hot hatches, and, and I have gone out in the hot hatches, I excelled immediately, uh, they got, the instructor said, if you've done this course before, I passed six cars in the first two laps, and the guy's like, geez, you don't need, you know, training or whatever, it was just natural ability, I'm not showing off here, I was surprised myself, uh, and then we got into the, the tubs afterwards, and I just said, I'm, I left, after four laps, I got out. And I still had three laps to go. And the, the, the instructors were like, uh, are you okay? I said, well, first of all, there's no knob on this gear stick. It was a manual. And it's this tiny little thread. And then second of all, I said, I'm freezing cold. And I keep watching everybody else go off the track and be towed, towed in. I don't, I just don't want the risk. I, it's not worth it. This thing is well, dangerous. If you're driving, the thinking about crashing, get out of the car. Do not drive a race car if you're, if yeah. you're constantly about crashing. Let me tell you. During those three races, when it was heavy rain, and we're going 150, 160 down the Kemmel Strait, there's no visibility because the cars in front of you are kicking up such spray, you can't see anything. Yeah, wouldn't bother me. Wouldn't wouldn't bother me. I would be right there with you. Uh, give me a couple of those practice sessions. I would be right there with you. I don't know what it is, but I would have the balls in a saloon car. Just it's the open top cars. My God, do I. Uh, uh, worship the Formula One drivers, the Formula Two drivers, the the Formula Three, the Formula Fours, the the Women's Championship. I don't care the balls on all of them to do what they do and then do it at speed and then do it against each other. Oh my God! I mean, it just this is when I realized how much I respected Formula One drivers and other open top racers. But yeah, any saloon cars, I will get in there and I will go balls to the wall. I would love it. So what 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 is the top speed that you got up to in your car? I mean, it's not about that, right? I mean, I'm, I'm asking for people listening. It's no, not right. about. Oh yeah, yeah. So, it okay. Probably was somewhere in the high 150s at the end of the Camel Strait before at about 140 meters, 130 meters. You must stand on the brakes. Uh, Which to go what, uh, what's that? What's that in kilometers for them as well? Um, uh, I mean, somewhere 250, 260. Yeah. Somewhere in there, KPH. And yeah. you got to stand on the brakes real hard before you go to, to go into Lacombe so you don't overshoot it because that's Actually, it. Uh, you know that, that goes uh, left quickly. Uh, 160, 165, which <clears throat> I've been at, uh, is about 320, I think. KPH. Uh, no, 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 it's not quite three forty. It's uh, that's in the two. Oh? Yeah. What, no, what, <clears throat> what, maybe. What, maybe. What, what is the top speed of the car? I don't know. Uh, what I can well, the, what's the it, longest straight that you could run it? Yeah, what's the right. capability of the car? So if you're going 160, can it go 190? Can it go 170? Can it go 185? Aero probably not 190. Probably in the 170s. I'm guessing because it's mm -hmm. got wings which slow the car down. But the the thing about a race car, though, Sherm, it's so different than a street car. Is the braking and the hammering. Street cars mm -hmm. will beat it on the straight. By the way, that's right. That's right. You want, you want to go. You want to go fast, Sherm. You go to the um, the German Autobahn, okay? And you can go. You can go balls to the wall. You can go two hundred and five, two hundred and twenty, okay? You couldn't do that in a race car, except the Formula One cars, obviously, because the aero kits are not designed for that. It's all designed for sticking you down to the ground and then being able to turn hard and right. and stick again to the ground when you come out of it. So it's not designed for those long straights where you go maximum like 200 miles an hour. And you would need, like the biggest straight he's done so far is, is Spa. Uh, and the Spa one is from Eau Rouge. So he's picked up speed going through Eau Rouge. You're probably doing, what, 70, 80 miles an hour? No, no. no. The straight begins at La Source when you make that 270-degree right-hander at low speed. Okay, after the start-finish straight for everybody. That is basically one straight all the way through Eau Rouge to Lacombe's. It is what I, it's probably the longest wide open throttle or almost wide open throttle uh, mm. set in all of Formula One. It's mm. enormous. Uh, but so, let me tell you, you're going up a rouge. You're yeah. going up 
far more in excess of 100 miles an hour in that crater. Wow. If you look at the data on my thing, you'll see I'm, I am nowhere near, I'm, I'm in kilometers per hour if you see my mm. grand video that I put up with, with the thing. I'm way over 100 miles an hour. I'm up in, you know, I'm up in the 160, 170, 180 kph over over Arouge. And if I was a good driver, so 100 is 160. So you're doing about 105 through Arouge. Yeah, if I were a good driver, I'd be about 200. But that takes a little more nerve. <clears throat> oh, in a Porsche. If you're Arouge. fine in Arouge, if you get the line wrong even a little, your back end will go out. You will spin out. Yeah. And one person <clears throat> did spin out crashed at maximum speed at a route, rolled over multiple times, and had to be hauled out in an ambulance. You, all rouge is no joke. You screw up you the, talk, bit, the back end. On the, on the days that you were you were doing yeah. think, somebody did that. Oh, That's my correct. God. Let they met the new grandstand. I almost <laughs> lost it myself once at a rouge because there was a miscommunication between an instructor and myself, and he meant to say there's this red house before the turn that is a sight point, and you turn it about 30 meters earlier. I understood him to say that's the turning point. And I turned in 30 meters too late. And let me tell you something. It's a amount <laughs> of skill that I had in car control because I grew up in the northeastern United States where it snows. And I'm used to the back end coming out. My back end came out immediately at that speed. And I was fighting it the whole way up to avoid spinning out and crashing. I did. Wow. The cup car, the GT3 cup car, where, where the engine is all the way on the rear bumper, I would have spun out. In the, I bet in you the, lost. Oh, go ahead, Charm. It came in his mid engine, so it's easy. Go ahead, Charm. Did you have a lot of understeer and oversteer? And to your understanding, and to explain it to people listening, explain what understeer and okay. oversteer okay. actually is. Understeer is when you're going in, in a corner and you turn the wheel, let's say to the right, and the car won't turn at that radius. It's going too fast beyond the grip of the tires, and so the car is plowing, essentially, if you're supposed to be turning to the right, the car is plowing to the left, and you're not making the corner. Uh, I had no understeer moments, no. Oversteer, that doesn't make you crash as much as oversteer does. Oversteer moments are where you're going into a corner and your back end goes out. So if you're making a right-hand turn, your back end is turning faster than your front end, and your back end comes out. And if you do not correct, your car will spin, and you will lose control, and you will crash. And that's why there were eight cr most crashes are caused by oversteer. Um, um, two can oversteer I, in two days. Can I also oversimplify it for our listeners? Yes. The front. When you think of understeer, think of front wheel drive cars like a Honda Civic. Okay. And when you spin up the wheels and you try to go into a corner, and the front slides. Okay, that's when the front is lost, and that's understeer. And then if you're in a rear-wheel drive car, and you go into a corner, and your back end starts to go out from under you, and you've got to grab the wheel and go in towards the steer, that's oversteer as well. So there's just another oversimplify or simplifying yeah. the understanding of oversteer, understeer. Yeah. Uh, but Scott, uh, is, Scott is right, but he's more detailed. I, so I so for, for our, our listeners, what, what I'd like to so say... Uh, one of, say one of our listeners is driving down the freeway and their back end starts to kick out, right? Mm -hmm. The back end. They're going straight. That's, the back end starts to kick over, out to the left. Oversteer. Now, which way should they turn the wheel to correct that? Towards the skid. Yeah, yeah. If your back end is coming out, again, the way I do it, the easier way, the way to stop oversteer is, is gently come off the gas pedal. Do not brake. Direction that you want. Do not brake. Turn the wheel in the direction you want the car to go in. And then once your back end has caught up with you, it'll catch up. You know, you have to counter steer basically the direction of the skin. You, once your back end has caught up with you, then you can steer again, at, but basically apply throttle again and keep going in the direction you want. Uh, so for people listening, I think the main example and the Question. main thing that – to listen to is not to hit the brake once you once it never kicks out don't hit the brake okay that's that's the first thing the second thing is is you want to turn to the direction you want to go but i thought okay i hate talking about it listen for a second talking stop talking, stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. can you not hear me 
Uh, what I'm trying to get you to, to explain it to people so they can understand. So here it kicks out like this. Now I should turn my wheel toward the way it's kicking out. Am I correct yes. in saying that? Yes. Yes. Yep. And then behind you, behind you, you're turning the wheel towards what's happening the behind you, and then keep going. Correct. Yes. yes. Well, yeah. Is that correct? Once you feel you're if, if, if it kicks out this way, I'm not going to turn it opposite of that. I'm going to turn it in to where 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 it's going. Yeah. And then turn it the yeah. other way. De accelerate. De accelerate. Let go of the accelerator. Let me see correct. if I can. You, you actually turn the wheel in the direction that the rear end is going in. You, you gently come yes. off the gas. Right. If I'm going like this, I turn my wheel like If my back end's coming out yes. this way, I turn my wheel this way. But the first thing you do is you immediately come off the gas gently and counter steer. When you feel that your traction has caught up, then you can, again, steer in the direction that you want the car to go in and you can get back right. on the gas. And you so, should get so, I, so the reason why I bring that up is because a lot of people, when they experience that, and you see it on the freeway. They panic. They hit the brake, and they no. turn the opposite way, and then they lose control. And they <laughs> they jackknife. So they jackknife and hail the oh. oncoming cars. Hit them. <laughs> yes. And so what I'm trying to um, get get over, and so people can understand, is that one, don't brake, don't hit the brakes, and two, turn in the direction of where the car is tailing out. If it's tailing out this way, you turn to the way it's tailing out, and mm -hmm. then turn back. Tailing out that way, you turn to the way it's tailing out, and then turn back. If you turn the opposite way from where it's tailing out, then you're going to spin. Correct. And right. De accelerate. No. Right. And if you don't react fast enough to that, if you don't counter steer fast enough, you're going to spin. Yeah. Uh, and okay. and if I may, that is why everybody who is driving, especially uh, when you're coming off a freeway and you're taking, like, let's say, a right hand bend, okay, and it's a bit icy, it's been raining, etc. Your tires aren't warm enough. And the car goes out, so you're turning to the right, and your car goes out left, okay? Because you're turning right. Your car goes out left on you. Let go of the accelerator. Turn the wheel gently. Don't jerk it. Turn the wheel gently to try and catch it, but you've already deaccelerated as well. Mm -hmm. And then when the car starts to straighten up, then you can kind of accelerate a little bit, or you just straighten the wheel, or bring it again if it needs to be caught again. Um, but, you know, the trick is not to panic, and the trick is to always be alert. It can always happen, especially on turns, on bends. One of the other things that happen on freeways is that people aren't paying attention. They hit, they hit the brakes because there's cars ahead of them that are braking. And then they start to, like, they think, oh, God, I better go to the left or to the right of that stationary car. And then they get hit by a truck in the other lane. It's You've got to pay attention. Now, do, do you get to do donuts at the end of your stand? <laughs> no, that's, that's the thing that we reserve for F1 drive. I don't think they want us tearing up the tires that much. They do Did have by the way, they have a drifting course. By the way, they do. But did I, you do it? No. I, I, Are you going to do it? I haven't done a drifting course yet. But they do. Let me be clear. To allow you to get in the race car, okay? Porsche requires you to take a certain number of days of precursor courses, either from them or from another mm -hmm. sort of driving school. And those right. precursor courses put you on the skid pad, by the way, and make you lose control, make you go into a skid because they do not want you going on the track at, you know, 150 kilometers an hour and not knowing what to do instinctually if, an, if a big oversteer moment happens. So that's why you can't go from the street directly into the race car. You have to do some training days in advance. No, no newbies allowed. <laughs> so I'd like to remind everybody to like subscribe and hit that bell notification if you're watching this on youtube and if you're listening to us on spotify remember to hit the notification button so you can be aware when we have another episode now before we end this episode what i'd like to ask scott is when you think about your overall experience how could somebody just joe average how could he not, maybe he can't get to the level where you're at because it seems quite expensive, but what could they do okay. just the layman who wants to learn to drive better and just to have a little fun? Okay. Um, a bunch of car brands like in the United States and in Germany, like Porsche offer driving experience schools. Um, 
Porsche does at various Porsche experience centers, like the one that you did in Carson, California, I believe it is. Um, there's also uh, one on the East Coast that's uh, in the South. Uh, they also rent rent out uh, Barber uh, Motorsports Park in Birmingham for the more serious driving. BMW has it. Uh, AMG has it in their AMG Driving Academy. And they take people who basically have no experience and teach them, get them out on the track, get them out on the skid pad. And the beginner level courses are anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 a day or BMW, for example, has what's called M track days where you can, they go on a course and you can do for $500, you can do half a day or even less expensive. They have what's called BMW car control clinics, where, which are a few hundred bucks and you'll get in a car and they'll take you around an autocross and they'll teach you techniques of car control. So there's various levels. There are also racing schools in the U.S. that are cheaper that like, you know, Skip Barber or let's say Lucas Oil School of Racing, right? You go down to Florida or Georgia for about 6,000 bucks in three days, they'll put you in a formula car and you'll do nothing but track time for two days, it's three or $4,000, uh, which is a and, fraction. And also look, it's not just in America. They, they have, they have driving education and they have semi race days and track days all over the world i mean i'm in ireland which is a small population of 5.3 million and there are at least two tracks here there's one in the south and one in the north uh, one is called mondello and the other one was kirkistown i think that's both of those i've done track days on both of those um in the uk there are plenty there's plenty of them in the uk <clears throat> brands hatch does them silverstone does them all the big names do them uh up and down the country so all all over across the world for all of our listeners if you really fancy getting your butt in a car this the, the, those experiences are there they don't cost a fortune you don't need to have an expensive race suit and helmet and everything else you can go just put on a they'll give you a helmet and you can go out and experience these things. And they're, they're incredibly good fun. And if you think you've got half a skill, uh, it's, it's a wonderful moment to release. There's no cops. There's no speed limits. I mean, let's be realistic. You're never going to get to your top speed that you might get in a car on a, on a, on a street uh, or, you know, like somewhere like that. Let's be legal and say, uh, you know, uh, in Germany on the autobahns. But, you know, we all know people have accelerated and speeded. But in today's world, with all the cameras everywhere, going on a track is a wonderful thing. Uh, and it's all about car control. It's not about the high speed you get up to, but it's doing it in effort. You know, you're really putting the effort in in those corners. Go ahead, Scott. The difference between the street car and the race car is braking and the cornering. When you hit the brakes full force in a race car, you are thrown into your harness. You are compressed. You are probably like plunged into your harness. It's very different. But let me be clear. Like before doing this, I have done all of these BMW car control clinics, BMW M track days, the AMG driving Academy. I've done the, the beginner course, the intermediate course, the advanced course. So there's lots of different opportunities that you, know, you can do way before you ever getting in like a GT race car, which is more money. Mm. The, 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 or, the, or they people, if you want to get a real thrill, do go-karting. Although, I warn you, if you're out doing outdoor go-karting track, most of them are rough and your wrists and arms will hurt like hell after four or five laps. And when you're finished, they will hurt for a couple of days. <laughs> oh, it's been my you. experience. Yeah, it's been my experience. Especially if the carts well, are crap and you do thanks. this. <laughs> thanks everyone for joining us for another episode of America F1. And we want to thank Scott for sharing his experiences at Spa. Frank, Frank, Frankenstein, Frank, Frankenfurter, Frankenstein, Frankenstein. I want and people to uh, know that he does this deliberately. <laughs> and for everybody out there, keep on racing, everybody. And we're all missing. We're all missing Formula One. <laughs> yes, we are. Oh. America F1, America F1, it's a golden run, America F1, ba 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 ba